Hey guys, this is Projections31, and today I decided to do something a bit different today. Right now, Monsters Immortals is going through one of the biggest droughts I've ever seen in like every video game. So today, I'm going to be ranking the uh, backrooms levels from the uh, hit video game Escape the Backrooms from least to greatest. Now, I must mention a few things before we start. This list will be opinion based and not community based. Levels with multiple parts, such as level 5 and 94, will be labeled as one level. And finally, level 7 will not be included on this list since it's not even finished yet. Now, let's get straight into the list. Number 13, Pipe Dreams. Now, why do I believe that this is the worst level in the entire game? Well, the level itself outside the game is cool. I do like the concept, but the way they portrayed this level in the game is just straight up dual. I mean, you're just going straight. Like, where's the fun in that? This level is also a true definition of W gaming. Not only you do it once, but at the end of the boiler rooms, you get rewarded to do it again! There is one entity that chases you near the end, but it's not that big of a threat unless you stop running. Those are the reasons why Pipe Dreams is at the bottom of the list. Number 12, level... Uh, you know what, I'm not gonna try to say that number. But this sterile is meant to be the final level of the backrooms lore. In this game, it's meant to be past way to get to Haphazard Remnants, also referred to as level 94. There's not much to say about this level, then it's just a sterile, and that's it. You basically climb stairs. Anyways, moving on. Number 11, the poor rooms. Now, don't get me wrong, I do love the pool rooms, but the reason why this is at number 11 is this is easily my least favorite variation of the pool rooms. Why, you may ask? Well, let's just say it's just Stranger Sewers from Dark Deception, but you're just slower and there's no enemies. Unless they count those dark tiles as an enemy. I'm also not the fan of there being too many dark spots. I prefer the pool rooms being bright and relaxing. However, this is a maze and not just some straight hallway like Pipe Dreams. But it's pretty annoying despite the water slowing it down every few seconds. However, the Prooms is on number 11 since I'm not allowed to brutally hate the Prooms. I love them and it would be a place I would like to actually visit, not gonna lie. Number 10, the tutorial level. We all know what the first level we enter when we clip through reality is. You've probably seen it everywhere around the internet, but in this game, the reason why it gets on number 10 is that A, it's the first level of the game and it's not really anything too exciting. B, Getting to your first task is a bit of a pain to get, since you gotta navigate through the maze, but once you find the first task, which should be a room with a ladder, then everything should go smoothly throughout the rest of the game. Low Zero is very iconic, which is why it's a bit higher on the list. Now, let's move on. Number 9, Level Fine. Level fun is more of a stealthy type level. You sneak across the party goers without being seen. Speaking of party goers, I really love the new model overhaul they got in the new update. However, I do have a few complaints over this level, is that the level is a bit short and the environment is very basic. I think if they added different environments to match the theme and made it a tad bit longer, then maybe level fun will be a bit more enjoyable than it is now. I'm not saying it's not, it's just um, it's a bit basic is what I'm trying to say. Number 8, the Terra Hotel. This level probably took me the longest to beat for two reasons. The pictures you collect in section 2 don't save whenever you die, and there's like two entities that roam around the section. And the boiler room maze was a painful to navigate since there's also death moss present. I can see this level is meant to be challenging, however, I did learn that in section 2 of the map, you can get lost and find the pages in the maze. But guess what? I found out many days later that the codes were never randomly generated. There's actually three different codes that would appear with the help of RNG. I don't know, it's probably me, but this level is too painful to get past without putting all three codes in the lock and um, not looking up the path in the blitter room. I do like how challenging it is. I am like 50-50 for it. Number 7, Hep has a Remnants. Also known as level 94, the way Hep has a Remnants work is you basically run across a bunch of houses that are sat on hills until you get to a floating castle. But once you get to that castle, you go into a battle against Pennywise for like 1 minute and 30 seconds. The reason why this is on number 7 on the ranking list is because of the lack of almond water that is around despite your sanity draining faster than any other level out there. Not only that's a problem, but at night time, it seems less a while. Now, I'm not sure if hiding from the enemy, also known as the animations, affect your sanity draining, but it does drain a lot, which I said earlier. Now about that boss encounter. I don't really find it to be much of a boss encounter, I mean, I guess, since you don't really need to move that much. All you have to do is just stare at him and then he just disappears. And it usually comes in like 
one place. However, I do like the castle design. It's a very nice concept. I do like the way it's built. It's just, all I think is it needs some nerfing. Unless you like bee hopping like me. Number six. Level the end. The only reason why level the end is on rank six is everyone's favorite, the scratcher. Yeah, I never liked the way he worked. He always would just guard the area where the last few tapes were, and it would just get annoying. Though, I do like his model, and I do enjoy drawing him, as you can tell from the thumbnail. Level of the end is very simple. You click tapes, and get out. I do like the fact the lights do turn off when you're near done collecting tapes. It's a very good touch into the horror the backrooms is supposed to give off. Now, to be honest, I used to hate this level, but I started to like it more once I learned how the tables are meant to be used as hiding spots to get away from the scratcher. But yeah, I do like the scratcher. He's a very cool character. Slash entity. I just hate him in this game. Number five, the abandoned office. Now I know what you're thinking, but projectionist, you, you barely do anything in that level. Why would you put it in rank five? The reason why I like this level and why it's on rank five is that it's a really good place to stock up on all water and juice and other great stuff. You can even re-enter the level if you find the hub door at the pool rooms and stock up again. Of course, the abandoned office isn't a rank one room since there isn't many objectives you got to do or any puzzles regardless. It's entity free and there's like a rush to the next level door without getting spotted by a camera. By the way, I thought the camera was going to alert an entity on my first time playing. Anyways, I'm not going to waste any more time talking about an office. Let's move on. Number four, the Habitable Zone. First off, love the length of this level, despite only being the second level of the game. And one of my favorite entities, the Smilers, are also present in this level. Oh, there's also the Skin Sealers, who are just practically hard to avoid since they'll spot you no matter what you do. Oh, and sometimes they'll just camp doors after they're done screaming, which I hate that. This is one of the most engaging levels of the entire game, in my opinion, from finding key to exploring the hub and trying to stay away from the dark areas of the Smiler's room. This level deserved top 5 on the list. I do not care what anyone says. I love this level for the gameplay and the Smiler's. I also love the fact you can revisit the hub from certain parts of the game. Number 3. The Electrical Station. The electrical stations were my favorite levels in Escape the Backrooms. I love the mock-up Among Us tasks that we were gifted to do to open a gate that would only lead us to a stock room, which is the abandoned office. Oh, and by the way, Doom is weird because of the controls that were set. There's, however, these really ugly dogs known as hounds. Yeah, they were annoying at first, and they still are in nightmare mode. So I learned that the flashlight's really useful to flash them three times until they get annoyed and just run off. I love the way the electrical station was built because in the post that represents level 3 and only showed a gate door and some bricks, I'm really glad they were able to pull it off in this level. Number 2, Lights Out. Lights Out introduced one of my favorite mechanics in the game, the lid Dar scanner. Basically, it's a tool that isn't a flashlight, but summons these glowing dots that will light up paths that a flashlight couldn't. There's, however, this entity called the Retreaties? I don't know how you say it. Wretches. Which is in the game, but I do think it needs a model overhaul because right now it just looks like a red human. Anyways, Lights Out is my second favorite level in the game due to how dark and empty it is in the whatever you say it <laughs> name is. And give him about your anxiety levels until he jump scares you and reveals his very ugly face. No YouTube tutorial for now can save you from this very dark maze that encourages players to try, which is why I believe all first time players who play this game for the very first time should do if they're playing single player that is. The reason why Lights Out is on number two because number one is actually the most intense and I'll get to that right now. Number 1. Level Run For Your Life This is my favorite level in the entire game, even though it's like 30 seconds long or less, I, I didn't count. It's because I love how intense the chase is. In my opinion, I think this should have been the final level of the game, specifically because it feels like a final boss encounter. If you look behind you, you got multiple entities chasing you from all the obstacles you jumped across. I also wish that in the future they bring a uh, second part of Level Run for Your Life with different obstacles, entities, or even longer hallway. I also love the setting being hostile just because I always find hospitals and horror games to be unsettling except for Torment Therapy from Dark Deception. The first zone at least. And that is my list for all the backrooms levels from Escape the Backrooms, ranking least favorite to favorite or worst to best. I hope you enjoyed my rankings of the levels from Escape the Backrooms. Let me know what yours is in the comments below. And be sure you subscribe and as well as like the video. And I will see you next time.
拜拜。